Well, hello, folks, and welcome to another episode of Modular Curiosity. In this episode, we're going to talk about hooking... Oh, that was interesting. We're going to talk about uh, hooking up MIDI to the input of VCV Rack. That's right. This is not a sequence. This is all being driven from a MIDI track in Reaper. Let me give you that a view of that real quick. So this is a MIDI track which I recorded on my keyboard and I'm not a great keyboard player but I got some cool sounding jazzy chords going. And uh, so here's the question, how do we get this MIDI from a DAW to come out of DAW and in to VCV Rack? All right, well, let's go look at how to do that right now. Okay, well, the secret is a free piece of software called Loop B1. And what this is, is a, as it says, is a virtual MIDI driver. But what you could think of it as is that this is a virtual MIDI cable that comes from one piece of software to another piece of software, but both pieces of software are in your computer. So there's no physical actual cable and there's nothing, there's no place that we can actually plug it into, right? So to do that, we need Loop B1. Now, this is a free download. And so this is the download section. And it, as you can see, it's a Windows only, but it is 32 and 64 bit. I'm running Windows 10. And basically you just download this and run the executable and it sets it up. Now there are two things that you need to do. First of all, let's go over to Reaper. Now your DAW is going to be somewhat different. Uh, I think Reaper is an amazing DAW. Uh, it's the one I've been using and uh, so I'm gonna show how to do this but the steps are gonna be very similar. So we go to preferences which in Reaper is control P. And we have all our preferences here and under MIDI devices, notice that it found Loop B internal MIDI. Now I did have to restart Reaper after running the installation program for this to happen, but that's pretty standard. And down here, I have Loop B internal MIDI as a MIDI output to make available. And right now it is enabled. It wasn't before and all I had to do was double click it and say enable output to this device and okay, and now it's enabled. What that does for me is that now, this is my input. You see my input is coming from my keyboard, channel one. The output though here is in the router. What's the routing for this track? And MIDI hardware output. So this is what you would use typically if you had a physical, say MIDI synthesizer, that you wanted to connect with a MIDI cable so that you would have something in Reaper playing, uh, say a nice Yamaha motif synthesizer or a Roland Juno or something like that. And you wanted to mic the sound of that back in on another input channel. Uh, so that's how you would send it out. Well, what you have to do is, is normally set to no output. You simply select the loopy internal MIDI as your hardware output. And again, this won't show up unless you go to the control to do the preferences and enable it. Once you enable it, everything works fine. That's literally it. At this point, it's now gonna start sending to that virtual cable. Now, what about the other side with rack? Okay, this is gonna look a lot like the way that we sent MIDI out. Uh, you remember we had Windows MIDI and we used to have the bridge. I mean, we, we have on, the audio output, we have used the bridge before, and we've sent the audio from VCV rack, VCV rack over to the Reaper DAW so that I can record what I'm doing in Reaper. But now I'm doing the opposite. I wanna send MIDI from Reaper and come back in. So now I have the MIDI 4 device. There are several MIDI interfaces that you could use. It's just the one I'm using right now. So I'm gonna use Windows MIDI. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see the settings a little bit better. Okay, Windows MIDI, and here under devices, you notice like I have Loopy internal MIDI. It's, it just shows up. Great. I can say all channels or I want channel one. It's really, 
I might as well use all channels. I'm sending everything on channel one. And now what I have is the control voltage, gate, and velocity. And let's see what I used for my poly mode. I decided to use reuse. If I did unison, the very first MIDI note that got sent here would go to all four channels. So we don't want to use that. Probably any of the others would be fine. I'm just using reuse. Now, all I have to do from this point is go back over to Reaper. I'm going to say go to the beginning and start playing. Now, actually, I was also playing a sound uh, in, I was playing this effect sound in Reaper uh, earlier. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to turn the monitor off. So the only thing that comes out, the only sound that we're going to hear is what VCV rack itself is creating. So let's do that. I have just some very strange sounds with uh, braids and a lot of modulation making some really strange noises. That was weird. Okay, that's it. Boy, that was a quick one, but yeah, that's a big step. Now that we know how to send sound out using the VCV rack bridge so that we can record it in our DAW, next we need to know how to have MIDI from our DAW come in. Well, gosh, what if we combine both? No problem, let's try it. Let's come over here. Instead, I want to use the bridge and I want to use port one. And now let's come back to Reaper. Now I'm back over in Reaper and I have another audio track. And as you remember from a previous episode, the VCV rack bridge is a VST effect. So we go to effects and we're gonna look for VCV. There it is. Okay, and you'll remember that on rack, I told it to export to port one, so I have to make sure that I'm listening to port one, and sure enough, I am. Okay, now that I've selected my port, I wanna to go to record, and I don't wanna record the input audio because that would be my microphone. I want to record the output. So this is going to be recording what comes from a VCV rack. And I want to record the output of this effect. So I'm going to arm it. I'm going to go ahead and go to record mode. <laughs> But notice, we're now recording it. And if I just stop that, now I'm gonna come back over to Rack, mute it so Rack doesn't play, come back to Reaper. I can mute this because we don't wanna send MIDI out. Oh, this was my previous uh, track. Well, well, don't worry about it. We'll just say I want these two glued together. Come back to the beginning and I turn the effect off just so we don't have it conflicting with, with uh, the bridge coming in. And let's see, is there anything else I need to do? I need to make, I don't care about the input. I can go ahead and put this back here. I don't think that actually matters because this is what I'm gonna record, I'm not recording. And so we should be able to hear this track. Let's see. And we do.
So what we've done is a complete round trip. We've created a MIDI track. Here, we've created MIDI in Reaper. We've sent that MIDI over to VCV Rack. We've read it in using the MIDI 4 module and the Loop B internal MIDI cable, that special software cable to connect the two. We can now drive anything we want here. Now, what if we want to continue and record that? Well, we just put it out to the bridge, port one, and back in Reaper or whatever doll you want. We listen to the VCV bridge, port one, and make sure that what we're recording is the output of this channel. Because remember, this is basically an effect like a reverb on a channel, but the effect is the actual sound from VCV Rack. And that's it, folks. That's actually pretty simple. Once I learned about the Loop B tool, which, by the way, I should say thank you to the newbie forums on the Reaper uh, forums, that made everything easier. Hope that helps you. Hope your DAW is very similar and that you'll be able to do the same sort of thing. And until next time, stay curious.